medicine interns, and we're going to discuss the diabetic foot assessment with special attention paid to the neurologic exam. Now, this is it's very important because the lifetime risk of getting an ulcer on your foot if you're a diabetic patient is 25%. You have an incidence every year of approximately 2.5%. And if you get an ulcer, that's going to start leading you down a path for further damage and possible amputation. And the risk factors for ulceration form a nice triad. There's neuropathy, which we're going to talk about today, deformity, things like hammer toes, claw toes, bunions, other sorts of foot abnormalities, and trauma, which when we think of trauma, we think of somebody getting wheeled into the Cedar Crest ED for a car accident or such. But trauma in a diabetic foot is as simple as stubbing a toe or stepping on a little piece of plastic, like a bottle cap or whatever. So the detailed exam, which partly has gone in through the form, it goes over the history where you discuss with the patient, have they ever had problems like this before? Have they ever had any numbness, any tingling, any other sorts of foot problems? Are they controlled about the diabetes? Inspection is important. You have to look at the skin, including the webbing in between the toes. You have to start looking for calluses and ulcers and past amputations. Musculoskeletal, you have to see that the toes actually move. Neuro, which is what we're really going to talk about today. And then I'm also going to talk briefly about vascular. You need to feel the pulses both below the ankle and in between the first and second metacarpal, metatarsal limb stake. If you don't feel those pulses, you'll have to start thinking about vascular consults. So why are these important? We're going to stratify our patients based on what we see on exam. LOPS stands for loss of protective sensation, and that's what the neuro exam focuses on. Because if you go through this exam and realize that they have this loss of protective sensation, you're going to start thinking about getting diabetic shoes, start talking to specialists, even if the foot, you're even going to start thinking about surgery if orthotics are just not recommended. Peripheral arterial disease, which is more vascular, that's going to lead to different consultations, vascular surgery, you're going to look for other problems, clots in the legs, which is not our focus today. And if you have none of this, you can just keep going about your annual checkups with the generalist. So the full neurologic assessment always includes the 10 gram monofilament. There are four other exams in order to make this a complete exam. The pinprick test, the vibration with the 128 hertz tuning fork, the ankle reflex, and the VPT. I'm going to focus on the 10G monofilament and mention the pinprick because it's the easiest exam out of the other four. If two of these exams come back normal and you have no abnormal tests, you can safely rule out loss of protective sensation, which is important to all of us. So the 10 gram monofilament is this little device. You can see online that there's a lot more complex versions, but this is basically a very specific piece of fishing line taped up in a piece of cardboard. When you put 10 grams of pressure, it bends. That's all there is to it. You're going to go parallel for one second on six different spots, which we'll show you later. They include the bottom of the big toe, the bottom of the fourth toe, the pad of the foot at the first, third, and fifth MTP joints, and the heel. You'll see they're all highlighted on the sheet when you have a chance to work through them. I'll pass this around for you. If you see a callus, avoid touching it, because it's a piece of hypertrophied and thickened skin that's not going to have sensation to it. So when you press, you make sure it bends, you make sure that they can do two things, feel it and tell you where. If they can't tell you either of those things, they've failed. 
You make sure they feel it at each six, at each of the six spots, and you move about your testing. The pin prick I chose out of the other four because it's the simplest. You can get a pin or some other sharp object. The back of my reflex hammer comes to a point, so that's what I tend to use. You go right below the nail of the great toe. You'll press in just enough so that you can deform the skin, bend it just a little bit. You don't have to hurt them. You touch and let go and make sure they tell you that they can feel the sensation. Now the other three exams I'm just going to mention briefly because you may see the tools and you may have the chance to use them. But I prefer the pinprick and the 10G monofilament. The 128 tuning fork, you're supposed to put on the great toe after you've struck it, make sure that it's vibrating. You hold it, and if you and the patient both agree that the vibration has stopped at the same time, they've passed. The thing is, this is a highly subjective test, and it may take a lot longer than the pinprick. The ankle reflex, you either have to make sure the patient is laying prone or at least kneeling with their foot hanging off of the bed. And then you go to the Achilles, and you tap it, and make sure they plant our flex. If they can't do that, double check by making sure they hold their hands together tightly and then strike again. Hopefully that elicits the reflex. But as reflex testing is something tricky and takes a while to get, this, you may get false negatives. The vibration perception threshold is a small machine that's basically a piston and it will vibrate like the tuning fork and you keep going up on the dial until the patient perceives it. The setting of 25V, if they can't perceive it by then, it's considered abnormal. But it's a device that you have to purchase, and it's, a lot, and it's expensive. Whereas you can just have the tuning fork, or like I've discussed before, just use a pinprick to be the second test. So that's all I wanted to say about the neurologic assessment. The form is still coming around. If you happen to have a failed monofilament test or a failed pinprick test, please let the physician know so that we'll know to be able to go into a fully detailed neurologic exam. All right.